In the words of my friend and brother, Ajimaine, a true son of Niger Delta, the current probe of the NDDC by the House of Rep Committee on Niger Delta is just the available Nigeria series for July 2020. By August 2020, a new series will be released. I will move on to that one while we consider this old one as old and boring. And in preparation for that, more fintas wanted. The state of squalor in our country, Nigeria, can best be captured in a drama series called How Nigerians Underdeveloped Nigeria or How Leaders of the Niger Delta Underdeveloped the Niger Delta. While we are inundated with massive stealing going on in government in Nigeria and the FBI declaration of six Nigerians wanted for fraud, some other Nigerians did do our country proud abroad. A Nigerian PhD student in Japan, Ken Nanweke, drew global attention when he returned the post he found containing huge cash in Japan. Again, a Nigerian coach, Ndubisi Egbo, wins a Benia title and qualifies his team, Tirana, for Champions League. That's all for the good news. But back home here, how do you explain to anyone that in Nigeria, professors of medicine are employed to undertake the job of auditing? Why the trained accountant are nowhere near the auditing desk? Why the man who fence? You employ a medical doctor to carry out the job of a project engineer. Anyway, Minister Akpabio said NDDC project is COVID-19. No wonder they are surgically sharing the money into their pocket, including the ones meant for scholarship. How do you train EFCC staffs abroad only to bring in a policeman to head the commission? Yet you think corruption can be fought that way. I sit down and they look. You train directors in CBN to aim towards the peak, only to bring in commercial bank MD to head central bank, to head central bank, and yet expect the same government to impartially regulate this bank. We lie. You train career diplomats over the years only to appoint politicians as ambassadors and expect a great image abroad. You must be joking. You recruit custom officers who hope to rise to the pinnacle someday only to be headed by a retired army officer. No wonder custom is not about money but less about professionalism. If you look everywhere in our national life, these things are replicated and you can even remember some. Yet we close our eyes to it and expect a great country. No wonder there's hopelessness everywhere in the country. Between June and July, we just opened the books of EFCC and NDDC, and the stench oozing from this agency can send coronavirus back to China. To the extent that some are already fainting, what now happens if we decide to open the books of NNPC, CBN, FRSC, ICPC, Police Service Commission, the Judiciary, the National Assembly, the various ministries, parastatals, agency, including the presidency, we will not only put off the mic, but we even the generator will go off. I can assure you that if we dare go in that direction, a lot of people will not only faint, but fainting will become a course of study in our university, probably to be taught by veterans in fainting, like Professor Pondai, fainter in chief, um, Senator Fentai Meritus Dino Melai, Chief Ulisametu, Pro Fenta, and even the severe pain fenter, His Excellency, Peter Ifayoshe, former governor of Equity State. However, we still need more fenters as the absurdity and impunity is outrageous. I would therefore advocate that President Buhari should be informed that we need more fenters by petitioning the National Assembly to investigate the ICPC, the NMPC that has been alleged to spend almost trillions of naira without yielding result, the EFCC, the Nigerian police, the armed forces, and the security budget since 2015, the Ni National Social Insurance Trust Fund, the CBN, the FRSC, even the NCDC, Ministries, Parastatals Agency, MPA, NIMASA, even the National Assembly and the Presidency need auditing. By so doing, we will not only be getting more fenters, but it will be obvious that there will be no hiding place for those who help themselves to our commonwealth. Who knows? Some people around the president might also have taken courses in Fetton. After auditing, we must also make sure we show those involved the way to jail. Ekene, did you just tell me it's okay, I should put off my mic? <laughs> I better make a faint, Jerry. I think it is. <laughs> no, but you know, uh, leave us, uh, please don't faint. Um, I, I just remember that the umpa deck that um, Chuka referred to just earlier. I read, I came up, I came across an article, 1998, mm -hmm. and they titled it "The Orgy of Corruption." So even yeah. then, yeah. we're dealing with. So this yes. is like a replay of yeah. what has. So 
all this fainting, all this probing and fainting, where does it lead us? Can I, can I Nowhere say, fast. Yeah, so what yeah. I'm trying to say is that, I'll just say this yeah. and I'll let you come in. My own is that if we go to 2023, and I know everybody keeps saying, is that all we can hope for? And anybody elects any more of these people back, whether APC or PDP, any familiar faces, we have ourselves to blame. Quite. That's all I have to say, because yeah. they've shown themselves to all be incompetent. I don't think it's a, it's a question of parties. If okay. there was no 1998, it was not PDP. It was That's not, what I'm saying. Uh, no, no, no. So you mentioned oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So it's not about the parties. Mm. It's about the systems. Mm -hmm. um, look, the president, former President Jonathan had this thing where he said, do not put yam and goats together. Yeah. Yeah? It, it was simply alluding to the fact of, of processes. If you have a system where there's really no checks, no balances, yeah. um, I was going to go to that. you're going to have this thing. But didn't it's a, we have due process at some so, point? No, even after the due process, there must be... Uh, what you call monitoring and enforcement. Yes. So the system has broken down. Mm. Let's, let's just face the reality. So whether you bring, whoever you bring, and wh when it's easy for you as a chief executive, I'm sitting in the office as a chief executive of a government agency, and I, the system allows me to get so away with yourself. these things, you will do that. No, but uh, may, I, 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 may, I, may, I, may I suggest that the systems are there, but people are not working the system. So the point is, the system goes own back to how payback. the people who, the, the system, see, the system starts from politics. Because politics will break down law and justice. It's the political process or the political system. Once that system has been compromised, then you cannot find justice, you cannot find any other thing to go. We, we saw during the 2019 elections, during the campaign, where a leader of a political party said, once you come over to us, all your corruption, all your sins all are, your are forgiven. So that is a system. So because of politics, every other thing Everybody will move into was broken party. down. And then you compromise. So, so Akpabi himself that we're talking about was facing um, yeah, um, right. um, so how did we, how did we and then stop he, and then he became, immediately he moved. He switched over. He switched over. Forgiven. His sins were forgiven. How do we he stop the system from being politi politicized then? It takes the leadership. I mean, I mean, yeah. so, so, it takes so the leadership. my point is this. When you move to a point where there's massive institutional, the system is decayed to the point where someone, and, 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 and I say this not because it is someone or some people we need to rise up. I mean, when, when you listen to the, the monumental fraud and you talked about it, it appears as if, oh, it's another TV series. Right. There'll be a next season, like you said, in yeah. another there's episode. There's always some drama anyway. But, but, you know, I'm afraid that it will continue like this, right. except two things happen. Uh -huh. We rise up right. as a population, yeah, yeah, we get fed up, up, and then or it may leader, be, it or, may a be, or a leader arises to make that change. Yeah, sure. Either that, uh, if the people arise, it might, it might not follow a process that you and yes. I yeah. can, okay. predict. can predict. That's the yes. danger. Mm. Well, how will the people arise? Because if we go from what Libras, you know, said earlier, the people fuel this sort of this sort of system as well. Mm. If you get into into governance now, they're going to be expecting that you give the people something. So there's this expectation from the people that our son, our daughter, is there, and so we need this sort of our portion of the largesse, yeah. so the last portion of the of the national cake. Mm. So even the people need a change of orientation, which is why you are change advocating. of thinking. Yeah. Which is why you're advocating. Are we ever going to get out of this yeah, we cycle? We'll, we'll, we'll just <laughs> we keep, on, keep on advocating. I have to yeah. believe that, yeah. <laughs> as long as I'm here. It will take decades. It will, well, I don't know if I'll go decades as far as that. Is a long time. I hope to be alive to see it. No fainting, I beg, Libros, is all I can say for now. I'm guessing we'll be needing some broad shoulders to take on my advocacy. Up next. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.